a very special session. We have uh, the gold sponsors of PyCon India with us, EPAM. And uh, we're going to add Anand to the stream now. Hey, Anand, can you hear me? Hey, hello, everyone. Nice. Can you so, hear me? Yeah, you're, you're very audible. Um, you're fairly audible. Now, let me check the chat if everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine. Now, Anand, the stage is all yours. OK. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anand. Uh, I'm a delivery manager at uh, EPAM Systems. Uh, I've been in the IT industry for more than 20 years, and I've been working on uh, productionizing uh, data science workloads. I have been working on data products and data platforms for different customers, trying to kind of get their data science projects from models to production. So today I wanted to talk about uh, productionizing data science workloads and uh, uh, and some of the tools which we use for uh, productionizing them uh, with an EPAM, of course. So uh, how does a model go from development to production? Um, if you look at a typical AI product lifecycle, right? So we have the ideation phase where we are defining the problem statement, the scope of the problem, we are defining different metrics, uh, which you're using to kind of uh, define the model or evaluate the model. Uh, you're determining how much of the model is actually explainable and whether the end users can actually understand why the model is behaving like that so that they can actually make decisions. Uh, once we have kind of defined the problem well enough, we talk about the data preparation part where we kind of figure out what kind of data sets are available. Uh, are they clean? Do we need to clean them? Do we need to wrangle them? Do we need to kind of uh, transform them into a format uh, which is which we can uh, put to the models? Like, especially if it is text data, we need to vectorize them, convert them into, uh, uh, into, into a vector wherein the model can kind of uh, uh, understand it and go forward and we need to do that in a scalable way so we we build the etl pipelines we build the data data pipelines and we call one set of data a data product so once we have the different data sets available we kind of do exploratory data analysis where we kind of uh, do do the training sets visualize the data try to identify patterns and decide what kind of ML algorithms we can run on top of this data to achieve our goals. Uh, once we have done all these things, we kind of train, test, and tune the ML model. Uh, once we have achieved satisfactory performance of the model in the train and test environment, we build a binary file. And in, in Python, we can, we, can use a, we can use a pickle file and once we kind of build the binary file, we kind of uh, deploy the binary file into the production system. Now, building the binary file would typically be a, a pipe. Uh, should if it is a good engineering practice, we would automate it with continuous integration pipelines uh, and uh, help kind of that would kind of uh, also automate the training of it so that uh, we can repeatedly do it faster okay uh, once we have kind of built a model we need to kind of expose it to the end users uh, which can be done in multiple ways one of the ways is to kind of expose it as a restful service or a, a web service some of the other ways is to kind of uh, uh, store the predicted values in a uh, in a database which is further consumed by other applications to uh, do further processing. And finally, once the deploy development is done, we have gone through multiple iterations. We go through the production phase where we kind of try to monitor the prediction accuracy and the feedback on the model on a continuous basis. Uh, we need to kind of uh, continuously monitor uh, the model because the data might change. There might be new patterns which might be coming in and we need to be monitoring it continuously and once it kinds of uh, changes, we need to ensure that we go back in cycle, go, go back using your feedback loop, re-prepare it, explore it, retune it and uh, 
integrate it with the production system okay uh, so for us to do all these things we need a lot of frameworks and that framework should be able to kind of help us in building a strong ingestion strategy be able to kind of store the data store the model mo models provision computation resources for us both for storage as well as for um, computation um like if if the ingestion is if you are if you are using big data uh, large data we would need to spawn off amr clusters or um hadoop clusters or we need to maintain hadoop clusters uh, request for resources build them and kind of pull that through similarly if it is first in case of storage we need to talk of we need to kind of uh, store it in hdfs s3 or something equivalent uh the framework should also help us in following the engineering best practices so that uh, sorry sorry about that uh, we also need to be following the engineering best practices wherein um, the uh, uh, we need we need support in terms of git repository versioning model versioning code versioning Uh, in in case of uh, uh, data science projects and ml projects just versioning code is not sufficient we also need to version the data or we need to kind of monitor changes to data patterns and that would kind of uh, the framework should help us kind of do that and finally we should ha have help from the framework in deployment and uh, operationalization of the model and that is typically done by the ci cd pipelines in a software engineering uh, project but in case of a data science project we would need uh, additional capabilities like the typical continuous integration process or the continuous development process of a software engineering project which is not completely applicable for a data science project because we really can't have a lot of automation tests in place the way we kind of uh, use the feedback loop is different uh, we we can't have a simple uh, pass or fail test we would need to kind of look at what are the details of the pass or fail uh, fail part of the execution okay so uh, i wanted to talk about two open source projects which uh, we kind of uh, use uh there are open source projects as well as frameworks and tools which we kind of use one is dlab which is essentially a solitary environment for uh, doing collaborative data science and other is odahu uh, it started off as legion as a project for uh, machine learning ci cd but now it has kind of gone into a universal environment where we kind of have built multiple things uh, around it okay so as part of dlab we generally it's an uh, fail safe self service exploratory environment for collaborative data science work we uh, we use uh, self service web consoles we can use self service web consoles uh, we can build layers in like in an enterprise environment uh, we want kind of uh, uh, specific access to specific uh, environments and uh, uh a limited access across the across the environments so we can kind of create isolated sandboxes within uh, the environment and that and dlab actually helps us build isolated environments for playing around and for building uh, the exploratory environment uh, for us so we basically do it by uh, enabling dlab to kind of demand compute engines demand notebooks jupyter notebooks is built on top of jupyter notebooks uh how private data storage using uh, independent data product uh, data buckets etc so so and we can kind of create different collaboration levels to ensure that the data sources are shared the core repositories are shared uh, what level of sharing we can we can do across the enterprise um so odaho is the other uh, tool which we use very frequently which helps us kind of modularize our own our entire uh, Uh, machine learning uh, projects and machine learning uh, um, uh, products okay uh, so it helps avoid code rewrite it helps uh, what i call it prevents migration and communication issues it helps in kind of uh, 
uh, scaling the entire uh, machine learning uh, uh, project. It helps in kind of provisioning uh, infrastructure. We kind of integrate with, uh, it, it has a inbuilt CI CD pipeline specifically tuned for machine learning, which we can kind of uh, execute on. Okay, so uh, we kind of use it for both uh, on-prem solutions as well as uh, cloud solutions. So we kind of can integrate with uh, Spark, SQLer, and TensorFlow at the same time. We also the the tool also integrates with uh, uh, cloud uh, services like AWS, uh, GCP. Uh, we haven't yet connected with Azure yet, but with uh, AWS and GCP, we 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 do kind of uh, connect and uh, uh, we integrate with them and use use it for spawning the. Um, uh, infrastructure require, required for training uh, our models. So uh, it also uh, has different uh, layers, like you can build on the local machine, you can build on the training environment or the training machine, and you can have the final execution environment, which can kind of uh, finally get promoted into a uh, production uh, environment, okay? So uh, if you look at the in continuous integration uh, available in some of these tools or, or what we expect from a tool for us to kind of productionize a, a machine learning model is that we should have exploratory environments which can which we can use for training and testing data sets. It should be it should enable us to use ML tool chains, which are like uh, chains of uh, tools one after the other. We should have data storages, ability to store, store different data, integration with uh, data lakes, um, wherein we can kind of run data engineering pipelines to uh, take the data and actually push it into a usable format. Uh, we should have training environments and ability to kind of uh, uh, version both models as well as uh, I won't say data data we don't really we can't really version them but we should be able to identify differences in the data shapes which which we kind of get so so we have our we have a docker images res uh, registry inside uh, this tool which will help us kind of ensure that we push the right images to uh, to the right environments and similarly, we can kind of uh, look at the training data sets, test, test data sets, and see how the data set shapes change over a period of time. And that would kind of uh, come out as part of our training reports. And we can version those training reports and store those training reports, uh, etc. At the same time, we want the compute resources to be spawned up, spawned down uh, whenever uh, they require. So our um, provisioning scripts so that Tools provision and scripts will help us uh, spawn up the uh, spawn up the compute resources, spawn down the com compute resources, uh, so that uh, we use uh, the compute resources which are absolutely required, uh, and and helps us build uh, save costs across the board. So and once the training is done, we can actually push it to uh, the to the uh, final uh, production where the product is actually executed. We can scale up, scale down the services. Uh, we need to log it, monitor it, uh, and ensure that we have the right alerts. Apply A-B testing if we want to do uh, do the A-B traffic split, do A-B a -B testing if we, if we want, and kind of uh, finally get good reports out of it. Okay, so in conclusion, when we kind of uh, for creating and productionizing data science in the real world, uh, we require comprehensive and collaborative end-to-end -end environment that allows uh, different stakeholders, different participants to collaborate together, work on the same set of data and uh, work closely and be able to kind of incorporate feedback easily and quickly across the entire data science life cycle. And this would help us build a reliable and a repeatable environment um, following the uh, uh, good engineering practices. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm now open for questions. Thank you, Anand. Let me just quickly go through uh, the chat and uh, get some questions out of there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, okay, let me, that's a very big question. So I'm just going to break it in chunk and put it on the screen so that everybody can see. So the first part, I guess, goes like this. If I miss out something, um, please wait for the second half. Yeah. So the direction of whether composition is better or meta classes plus interfaces are better, a good choice. This Sorry. Looks uh, like for the previous one. Isn't this regarding the same? Oh, this okay. Looks okay. Like previous, this looks like uh, the previous session. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess the um, attendees are still having conversation with Raveen from the previous okay, chat. Okay. I apologize on that. No problem. If uh, you have any questions right now, feel free to uh, share with them. Share, share with. Uh, Anand on Zulip. You have uh, the stream named as 2020-stage-delhi. Or if you have a quick question, feel free to just post it right here on the hop-in chat. I'm here to pick it up uh, because we'll have to quickly move to the next session. Anand only had 15 minutes, and we have another 15 minutes for EPAM uh, with Stefan. So, OK, no problem, no problem. Uh, so let's, let's uh, invite Anand to Zulip. And uh, feel free to go on Zulip, uh, ping Anand. Make sure you put your questions there and ask for any other resource that you need. Anand yeah. can, uh, yeah. So I will also be available on the EPAMS uh, Exceed uh, booth. So you can reach me out there as well. 